guys, it's Emily. For today's video, I am doing a spoiler-free review of the absolutely incredible book, My Favorite Thing is Monsters by M.L. Ferris. So this is a very big, very long graphic novel book that follows a young werewolf girl who is investigating the death of a woman in her apartment building. It was ruled a suicide, but her main character, Karen, thinks that it was murder. This book was absolutely amazing on so many different levels. Like, it's just so cool. First thing to know is that Ferris kind of like exploded on the scene. She was an artist who contracted West Nile virus, which then led to her being paralyzed. She had to relearn how to draw, and then that resulted in this book. A lot of people that are like very prominent in the world of graphic novels hadn't heard of her before until this book and are like, oh my god, this woman is amazing, this book is amazing, and I am 100% on board with that. So first off, the art. I think like where Persepolis is all like big block lines and colors and shapes, this is like the opposite. It's all like, I don't know if you can see from there, and my camera doesn't autofocus, otherwise I would bring it forward, but all of this is like tiny, tiny, tiny line work. So like this is done in blue and black and a little bit of red, and I guess like some green in her earring, but it's just like tiny, tiny, tiny cross, cross hatching, is that what you call it? I don't really know. It's so intricate and so beautiful and so sometimes you have these gorgeous hyper saturated images but there is also quite a bit of black and white art so like here's an example of what you would see in black and white and this is all done by hand in black pen and it's all done on lined paper and then also a lot of the pages have pops of color like here you have like pops of red throughout this image so the line art in this book is so cool so beautiful i absolutely adored it i will say though it's confusing to the eye like it took me a while to get through this book not just because it's long because like a long graphic novel is not like a long book like you still get through them pretty quickly this did take me a very long time because my eye was just like darting around all over the place but I really liked that like it, it felt chaotic in a good way and I will also add that because it's on lined paper when you get to like this kind of text stuff it's actually kind of hard to read because again your eyes super distracted by just like so much stuff going on on the page but it's it's so worth it because you're reading this as if it were Karen's journal. So the line paper gives it like this cool aesthetic of like, it is actually a journal, it's really neat. It also emphasizes the fact that Ferris is like doing this with pen, which is just like amazing. Sometimes I think you forget like the process that goes into creating graphic novels and the art in graphic novels. And so that's like a reminder of it, which is really cool. And because this is her journal, I think the fact that it's a little chaotic and messy and jumping thought to thought and kind of moving all over the page, it emphasizes the fact that it's a journal. It makes you feel more like you're inside Karen's mind bouncing from thought to thought. And I really, really enjoyed that, even though it was like different difficult for me, if that makes sense. Karen's narrative voice is just so delightful to read. I think Ferris really toes the line perfectly between innocence and insight. Karen's a kid, like she's just a kid doing all this stuff, but at the same time, Ferris still plays with the idea that kids are oftentimes way more perceptive than we give them credit for, and she plays with that dichotomy so well in Karen. I absolutely loved it. Plus she's so funny and like weird in the best way. And then you have the monster stuff. This isn't like scary. This is like more of the kind of kitschy, campy, old school horror movies is what Karen likes so much. Karen's desire to like be this werewolf girl is rooted in her observation that being a human sucks. Like it blows on so many levels. Like why wouldn't you want to be this dope ass monster? So it plays around with that a lot. And it's this wonderful metaphor that Ferris uses in just multifaceted ways like how well she employs it is astounding you have like the one kind of very obvious coming of age just general coming of age story and as you often see with coming of age stories there is kind of a sexual awakening associated with that and i don't mean like explicit sex but just becoming aware of your own sexuality and of your attraction towards other people and how that is an experience that is just like that's a lot to deal with. And then the monsterness also kind of plays into the fact that in many ways, Karen is aware of her own otherness. She's poor, she's non-white, she's described as a mix of Irish, Native American, and Mexican, tied to her kind of sexual awakening. There are early hints in the book that she may be somewhere on the LGBTQIA spectrum, which is then delved into later in the book in more detail. To me, it was this incredible, oh, it was just, it was just so well done. It was kind of like taking so many marginalized groups and voices that 
mainstream Western white society has labeled as monstrous and reclaiming that and turning it into a good thing, which was just such a wonderful metaphor. Like it was so great and it was handled so well across the board. One thing that's really, really fun is that as you meet new characters throughout the book, kind of excluding her family, but everyone else that you meet, you can tell if they're a good person or a bad person in Karen's eyes by whether or not she characterizes them as a kind of monster. And it's like so cute and fun and wonderful. I was super lucky. My dad just randomly sent this to me in the mail because he'd read some book review of it. Like he doesn't read graphic novels, but he knows that I do. And so he sent it to me. So, oh, so thank you so much. And I want everyone else to read it. And so if any of you are planning on reading it, or if you have read it, please let me know because I want to talk about this book so much. I will say it ended on a cliff hair. Ah, and I know that volume two is coming out in October, but I don't know if that's going to be it for the series or if it's going to be more ongoing or what's going on there. But I cannot wait to get my hands on it. I am actually rereading this. Like that is how much I liked this book. I finished it and immediately started rereading it because it's just that good. It's just so good. Oh, it's so amazing. Like this is, I think now like a top three book for me, like top three. I'm still too indecisive to like say number one favorite, but like it's, it's up there. It's up there. I, oh, oh, even though I'm like making a video about this, I still have a hard time articulating into words how incredible I think this book is and how brilliant I think Ferris is. I am just so excited for more. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to see more of my face and I will see you next time.